I'm back. Weird. Huh? No. Look, she's not even paying attention now that I'm, I'm back. I'm hungry. You're hungry? <laughs> We're going to talk about raising boys here, a really unique theological perspective on how we can think differently about the uniqueness God made in little boys. But first of all, I'm going to give Janelle another shot at a really important question I asked earlier. Yeah, you did. So, and I learned. Janelle, scale from 1 to 10, because I was gone on vacation for two days. One being, you didn't miss me at all. Like, you're glad I was gone. And okay. 10 is like, you were sobbing, you missed me so much, and you're so glad I'm back. Where would you fall on that scale now that I'm back? Oh, my goodness, 14. Like, Very way good. past 10. I was hoping for 15, but <laughs> I'll take 14. But, oh, well and more, yeah, yeah. Before you said 10. I was I like, did. what I was is like, that? If I got 100 Boom. on a test, that's perfect. So you got, you got like 18 boys in your family, is that right? Four boys. In a row. Yeah. It was like, boys, boy, boy. By, by the third one, I was like, okay. You're just tired. You're like, another one? <laughs> I got to do this again? Then you have? I have three boys. Three. Three boys, two girls. Yeah. But I go girl, boy, girl, boy, boy. Oh, okay. Ooh, at the end. Yeah, the two little ones take up all of our energy. Yeah. And then we have, we just <laughs> create new energy for the older ones, essentially. Yeah. So has your experience with boys and girls been totally different? Very different. I homeschool my kids and even in teaching them, like... Raina just kind of picks things up and she'll sit there and everybody will be running around and she's like focused when it's time. It's amazing. And it's very different. It just shows that God did design boys and girls different. Yeah. There My is something boys, about it. especially the second one in particular, who I'm so glad we homeschool. If you would have told him, here's a worksheet, sit down, I would have gotten calls. He would have maybe been ADHD. <laughs> you know, and so I would switch things up and would say, okay, let's learn about frogs. Let's go catch them. Or, you know, you got, he needed to be more like hands on or I don't want to sit at the table. He'll sit like on the couch or on the floor to read, but he'll read like he reads and he writes. And so he's not less intelligent. He just, he's different, very yeah. different. And I was relieved to hear that my youngest son is in kindergarten. They have, it, I think, two recesses during the day. Oh, that's good. Which is fantastic. I was like, yes. That is good. I know some little girl could probably sit there all day long yeah. and say, could I have some more, please? You know, can we <laughs> yes. stay longer? Yeah. Not the boys. Yeah. Uh, and so I think oftentimes our society, as this article we have here, uh, when the world calls them otherwise, God calls them good, is what it's called. My pastor, Doug Selesky, sent it to me. Thanks, Pastor Doug. Really thoughtful stuff. Um, it paints this picture that really boys have this awful go of it in terms of how we think of them. That because men misbehave in yeah. society, we project that onto little boys. That when you see little girls behaving well and then little boys being crazy, yeah. you start to there's kind of just go, there's something with wrong them. with boys. Yeah. When he said that's not the truth. And he gives a really good answer here. I, I don't know if your experience with boys is the same, but. Uh, before we get to the theological answer, I even noticed this in, I won't tell you which boy, because I've got all, I got three boys in school. When you have lots of kids, you can talk about the kids and nobody knows oh, what yeah. you're talking about. Uh, thank you for turning the lights on. Yeah. Look at that. You can see us now. <laughs> uh, the one year, one of my sons had a male teacher and they got along famously. This guy understood little oh, boys. That's cool. And he was a lot to deal with. Yeah. Like all my boys are. But he had a great feedback. Teacher loved him. The next year, same kid, same school. Yeah. Regular feedback about him talking too much, moving around too much. Yeah. So what's the difference? Not my son. Teacher. And the expectation of little boys. Yeah. So I think there is something to this. Now, here's what I love, the beauty of this thing. He writes, bad is a word that so often gets used with boys bad boy comes off the tongue with all the alluring alliteration the devil can offer but if being a boy uh, but if by being a boy's mom a scout leader a Sunday school teacher and a volunteer has taught me anything it's that no child wants to be bad they long to be good yeah I've met a dozen chronically naughty children and all of them every last one responds to praise and encouragement like a flower trying desperately to find the sunlight if we want to help boys make it in this already weary of, of them world, we would do well to know that these are fundamentally the only ways to help them out. And here's the theological concept that I love, that I want to talk about. If it makes you comfortable, call it imputation. Oh. You heard that theological term before? Imputed righteousness? Yeah. I mean, it's a heady thing. Yeah. But she says, then go ahead. Impute to boys that they are good, 
even when you do not think that they are. But impute that enough to them, and you may just realize that, at least in this instance, imputation works both ways. You will begin to love them for all their energetic, creative, and smelly energy they bring to the world. A lot of smelly energy. <laughs> you will marvel at it and wonder why it ever drove you a little crazy. And for those who aren't familiar, imputation is a very biblical concept. I found a great article on it. You can look it up online. Desiring God talks about it. But it's the basic theological idea that the righteousness of Christ is imputed on us. That is, treated as if it were ours through faith. Yeah. We're not good, but we get Christ's goodness and perfectness and righteousness imputed on us. And God sees Christ in us. God decides to see the good in us right. through Christ, that, that is in Christ. Right. And from Christ. So they're saying, impute it on little boys. Stop getting mad about not understanding their excitedness. God created them, and it was good. Impute that, that onto them. Right. Do you think that's a game changer that'll work? I think it is a game changer, and it reminds me a little bit of that saying that's like, if a child is having issues, it's usually not the child, it's usually the teacher. Like, change that don't change a child change the teacher and so from a parent's perspective it's changing your expectations and the way you look at them yeah and changing you well and even the small implications of looking at a kid and going not you're bad but your behavior was bad oh yeah but like oftentimes that. when little boys are told all the time that they're bad they're bad they're bad now i know theologically we have to get them to the brokenness concept but you can you can destroy a little kid yeah you can and I, we have to, th this reminds us, I think, that God created male and female and said it was good. Yeah. And if that's the case, the way he designed little boys is good. It is good, yeah. And we have to stop treating it like it's a disease. Yeah. And, and they very much take on that identity, like you said, about yeah. being bad or not being good enough. Mike says teachers can have a huge impact on children for years. I still am affected by the way I was bullied in my second grade teacher, but have great memories of others. Yeah, I had a, it shows you the power of a teacher. I agree, Mike. I had a sixth grade math teacher that pretty much wrecked me for math forever. Wow. That one year in the way she just dis despised little boys and treated us poorly and embarrassed us, it wrecked me for math the rest of my life. And I know that's putting a lot on her, but it was terrible. Yeah. I don't want to get into the details of yeah. it. Yeah. Here, but um, teachers have that kind of power in someone's life. Yeah, they do. I had many inspire me to do good things. I became a teacher, so I'm not. I love teachers. Don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. that. But yeah. So, uh, what does that look like as a parent in practical ways? I was hoping you'd help me. You've got more boys than I do. Um, How do you take the rambunctiousness of a little boy when you'd rather have them sit quietly for you and impute onto them? Their, the, the goodness in them, that, that, they're, that God made them and they're good and the way they're designed is okay. And they are just rambunctious. And I'm not saying theologically good. No one's good. No, not one. I'm talking about just how, how can we take a little girl and say, oh, look at her. She's so sweet, sitting quietly, following directions. Yeah. That's good versus a little boy picking up a stick and turning it into a sword. Yeah. Why is that bad? Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot of it. Jeffrey says, Brian, uh, Pastor Brian, well done. Imputation and perspective and descriptive are terms to me, are new terms to me. Mike says, I didn't tell my parents for years. Yeah, I think little boys hold that in. Yeah, my brother went through a lot of that, and it made him actually label himself and despise the whole, everything that involves education and just like he grew up thinking that's not for me right because if mm -hmm. you're not intrinsically if that's not your thing the way it's set up then you would think okay well then I'm not made for that it's not for me yeah Deborah says but we're not good and we do need to uh, learn certain things and ways to be in society not to squelch who a person is but to train up in yeah. the way to go yeah little girls have been known to be rambunctious as girls there are exceptions with little girls but i think you've i've seen at least in my kids younger age classrooms that rambunctious little girls get away with it way more than rambunctious yeah. little boys do oh, yeah. but and it's labeled differently it's labeled yeah. more like behavior than her there's something and we, i'm sorry but if some people may not agree but there's 
even misdiagnosis of ADHD oh, a yeah. lot more in boys than there is in girls. Oh yeah. Uh, and I, I think, as this article indicates, that, that statistics indicate that, that boys have it diagnosed more often. Whether or not they have it more often, I'm not a psychiatrist. But I will say that I want to be clear, Deborah, you're right. We're not good. I'm not claiming that we are good. It's Christ that makes us good. We are, e we are bad, okay? But I, I'm just talking about that societal idea that little girls and the way that they are is good, sit quietly, speak softly, listen attentively, play sweetly, make up little stories, with a, that that's good while little boys are bad. I think that's a generality that's true in our culture. Yeah. And that's harmful to little boys. It is very harmful. One of the things that I try to do, and when they were little especially, because what Deborah's saying is they do have to learn how to behave and how to follow rules and sit down and my issue is the when. Uh, for example, my daughter was a lot more ready for formal education a lot more earlier than her brothers, especially one of them. And so I think validating and valuing people's personalities and not forcing like, just because Raina was ready at five, it doesn't mean this boy should be ready at five to sit and read through a book for 30 minutes. You know, and that doesn't have to make him walk away and be like, I just can't do it. I can't read, for example. Also, picking and choosing. Like, does he have to sit? I know that was a big thing. Like, with one of my sons, he wouldn't want to work at the table. And he'd be like, well, can I just, like, go? He would pick a room or, like, pick a bean bag. Do, is that a battle I have to fight with him? There was actually one teacher, te uh, certified teachers evaluate our work. And when I was trying to make certain things like this a battle... She would say, what's your overall goal? And I was like, I want him to love learning, and I want him to learn to read and work through his math facts. She's like, okay, can he do that on a beanbag? Does he have to be seated? <laughs> Isn't that deep, though? Like, you get caught up on, like, my goal is for, be, for him to be a respectful man, for example. Yeah. Are there battles in our way there that I have to fight to get him there? Yeah, does sitting on a beanbag make him, well, while he's learning, make him a disrespectful man eventually. Right. No, it just okay, makes him a guy Raina who likes being Okay, sitting there with yeah. a little pencil looking all, all cute. Does that make her more of a learner yeah. than a boy sitting at the por on the porch at a be with a beanbag? You know, but um, with Dr. Dobson's book that I read when my first pregnancy, he said put them in situations where they win. You know, so because you know they have a lot of energy, put them in those situations where they can let go and do. Yeah. It makes it easier to then say, okay, these 30 minutes, I need you to sit down and listen or, you know. Well, and see, I, I actually took my youngest son to, to his kindergarten orientation because we homeschooled a little bit for some of the kids. Yeah, yeah. We've only had one other kid do kindergarten before in a, mm -hmm. in a public school setting. And Sarah went to that orientation. This was my first one. And I went in there a little nervous because it's like, I know my little boy. He is all little boy. <laughs> and I walked into that classroom concerned, like, is this going to be a good year? And I got to tell you, after like five minutes in there, I was like, it's going to be a good year. Oh, that's good. And there were some things that seemed, the teacher seemed to acknowledge that she gets it. Okay. Number one, she's like, we don't have assigned seats here. Oh. Kindergartners don't need to have their assigned desk. They're going to be getting up and moving around. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. Uh, I love that. There's like beanbag chairs. There's bouncy seats. There's regular chairs. There's a rug to lay on. Did you see, there's two recesses. There's that. music class. There's. I was like, okay, you're not going to force my kid into this little box. Yeah. You're going to let him be a little boy, and it's not going to. It's not going to hurt his chances yeah. for being a rambunctious little boy. Right. You know. Right. Betty says some teachers are so stretched. Some boys just are immature but it's called misbehavior. I think immature, and maybe I'm calling it the wrong way, but I'll go with you, Betty, because I'm struggling now as they get older, having expectations, because it's like, let's say what I was doing at 16 may be different to what my son, he's a boy. Boys mature differently and and, see, and expecting more. Yeah. I, I have to catch myself a lot of times, especially because... You know, boys can are taller. They look, they don't look like they're eight anymore. <laughs> My teens, you know. So sometimes I have to catch myself and say, they're they're acting their age. Why am I expecting more from them? Yeah, I'm not sure that you all are gonna like this, 
but I don't even know that immature and mature is the right yeah help me with that because it didn't it didn't feel right to say that what is it then? well because look at what we've done as a society is we've said how little girls typically behave that's mature how little boys behave yes that's immature yes is that a false dichotomy have we taken what characterizes a good that. girl and turn it into mature and normal I love that yeah what if true. we totally flip the script and we start to say that the way little boy acts is like normal wouldn't it be the girls that are weird like what are you doing yeah. sitting there wh yeah. why are you sitting down and just listening yeah why don't you get up yeah jump around a little bit have some fun yeah what are you bored like if we flip the script suddenly boy if boy behavior is deemed normal it's the girls who are immature i love that and they don't have a developed sense of creativity yeah it's it's even in the way we label maturity i think that we're putting boys at a disadvantage i love that yeah I had an experience at one of my Sunday schools and it was with my son and because I knew the teacher and she had all girls at home, we were stopped every Sunday after church for the son. And I knew the behind the scenes and I'm like, you got to understand boys a little bit. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So I asked for him to be switched and he had a man, never called and it's been two years, never called. Now I'm not saying my kid's perfect. You know, but there's ways to accommodate. Just like we accommodate, what? What are you smiling at? I don't know if you're going to like where this is going, though. What? The consistent theme would be who's having trouble adjusting to what little boys are like. No, yeah, I think we are. Who's we? Women. Absolutely. Okay, I did not say that. Absolutely. I did not say that. It is Janelle true. said it. It is That it sounds like it's a problem for women. When I was pregnant with my son and I, and I started researching... Um, different things about boys, I, the main thing I realize is I have to change the way I think and change even who I am to engage, to meet them where they're at. But I'll flip it on you and I'm going to say men need to step up. We need more men. Here we go. We always have to step it up. You what just said we're not, no, listen, we need more men in Sunday school. We need more men in schools. Like we need men to help. I'm not even going to say fathers. I'm just saying it would help if there were more men in Sunday schools that would switch it up a little bit. Our girls need a little bit of that. Yeah, but I think some of that is not even men's fault either. What is it? Because is it masculine to nurture? I don't know. It's not masculine to nurture. Like right. pe People get angry. You know, My son's not going to play with a baby doll. My son's not going to push a stroller. And then you want some guy to go serve in the nursery? Not necessarily nursery, especially the older but, kids. But you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it's in a high school, finding a male teacher, not a problem. There's male teachers everywhere in high schools. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the little. They're nowhere in elementary schools and preschools. They're not serving in youth in, like, the smaller, the younger ages in church. Why? I think we've stigmatized the way that men are supposed to be. And so mm -hmm. what? Do you blame guys when they're told, don't play with that baby doll? You're a man. You pick up a gun. And no. You you fight. You punch. You you do it. You wrestle. What are you gonna have him go hold babies? You just in the used an example with the, your son's teacher in kindergarten. Yeah. There's something about him that gets it. He was a she. little boy. No, the, the you said he had a male teacher. Oh yeah, no, that that's this wasn't kindergarten. That was first grade. He He's the only he male teacher. It. But that's my point, though. You 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 don't think it's gonna take men a little bit. To plug in. I just to refuse to make that difference. I just refuse to accept the critique that men get all the time. That step it up. It's like you're not doing anything. I, I don't like that. I mean, yeah, sure, men could do that more, but it's gonna it's not as simple as men going, Oh man, I never thought of this. I should serve teaching first grade Sunday school. That's gonna take an entire if that's the reality we have where men aren't doing this, we've got to backtrack. Why aren't they doing this? Listen and it's not okay. because they're lazy. That's that's the cheap answer. I think it's the way we're raising our boys creates men who don't think that it's their place to do that. Okay, I'll take that. But what Thank I, you, son, right? No, you're not. But <laughs> where I was trying to go is, it's kind of like when we say, when, you, when you're developing ministries or in the corporate world, you need a diversity of people with mindset, life experience, ethnicity, all of that, so that there's different eyes and perspectives. A, a person that's disabled is going to call out certain gaps that I just won't see because I don't walk that. So at the very least, we need men's voices in the nursery and especially the elementary um, uh, 
Sunday schools and, and schools in general to help women see the gaps. I can't see it, I'm not a woman. So I can see that I have to see it because I have four boys. That Sunday school teacher that my son had that was calling me or stopping me every Sunday, maybe it takes a man to look at some of the curriculum and be like, do you guys have, you know, some of the kids do X, Y, Z, or you don't think so? It takes, that's why God has both of us. I just think there are times when the majority of the need for change falls in one party. When I say that, I said to help us see the gap. So if you want us there every Sunday, cool, we'll do it. But we need men's voices and perspective to see the gaps. And, but that teacher I think needed somebody. I have to see it because I have boys. Maybe she needed another man to be like, listen, you can't have a boy go through. If you're, if he's a challenge, look at it this way. One of my favorite teachers, her name's Marva Collins. I don't think she's a teacher any, anymore. Her school is still in Chicago. Amazing. Look up her book. But she's very passionate about that. She was like, I'm sick of people having issues with a child in education and trying to change the kid. She was like, more than 90% of the time, it's the teacher. So if you are if you have an issue with a child, with a boy, you don't think as a woman sometimes it could take a man to say, I would have issues sitting there all day too. It, it probably would take that. But on what planet would someone be where they wouldn't hear that message? Like this is, I mean, this is known, right? Jennifer, this is not like we've pioneered the idea that boys are unique and rambunctious. Yeah. No one needs to. T it's not. There's not women walking around going, "Are you kidding me? Really? Boys are rambunctious." Oh my! We just said it's labeled as misbehavior. Right. I think women do need to hear, like, "Yo, that is not bad." We've I just don't want the answer to become. Approach them differently. Yeah, but the answer can't be that. But men need to step it up. Right, but I don't necessarily think really that's the case. With that. No, I just don't. I, I do because I think that message is given to men far too. You often. just said it, and you didn't mind saying, "Well, yeah, women are getting it wrong." And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. And I said, maybe, you know. But wow, why can't we leave humility, it there? Humility, people. No, but why can't we leave it there? No. Why does it have to be also a man's fault? It's not fault. But it it's sounds like fault. We need like your fault. help. We need your perspective. But we're helping. That's, That's the like thing. in the. Okay. Jennifer says, I agree with Janelle. I like this one. Thank <laughs> you. I mean, we could almost <laughs> stop there, but I'll keep going. She actually has a, a girls and boys. Uh, that men have ooh, men have to step it up. I recently saw my husband that when he's home, I need him to engage our son in a way I can't because he's with me and our girls all day. So even if they're not stepping up at church or school, they need to step up in the home. At the very least of knowing, Len gets this. Because th there's things I would do with my boys and Len's like, no, like, and he'll go and take them. He knows what they need. And no matter how good my intentions, I can't see that. So he does kind of say, he recognizes there's something I can see or I can do with the boys that you just don't see because you're not a man. I think it's more effective than to say, you need to do this, you need to step it up. I think it's more effective to ask, why aren't you? Okay, why? Okay, why aren't you? Okay, it's very possible that her husband had a mother who was a super mom and a mm -hmm. dad who wasn't that engaged. How would he know what it looks like? Why would he know it's a thing that he would need to do? Like, my right, dad grew up in a home... Right, you have to be home, open to us saying, yo, I need you. But see, my, my dad grew up in a home where there really wasn't much verbal expression of love at all. Yeah. He needs to just start saying, I love you. Well, it's not that simple mm -hmm. to just step it up now and change an entire lifetime of training and understanding of what's normal. Do you see? Yeah. Like, we have to understand the why before we... It could take years for a guy who had yeah. a super mom who did everything for their kids... And dad didn't have any room left to do anything. How would it, that child grow up to be a man who knows suddenly to get involved? Yeah, I get it that. It could take a long time to learn that it's necessary. Yeah. And so that that's one, another reason I'm not ever satisfied with the step it up thing, because it, it ignores the complexity. It's like just stop it. You you didn't know. Now you know. So now everything's gonna change. Um, Violet is saying, as a woman, I'm just wondering when I would be, when I would ever be okay with being told to step it up. It's certainly not an empowering or encouraging phrase. Okay, and I'm done. That's all we... No, but do you understand? This is exactly the point. Who said that? Lisa. No, do no, you no. she did. No. Okay. Violet. So, th isn't this true? When is it ever okay for a man to say, women need to step it up? What's going to happen if a guy says that? You just sat there before I said, yeah, but we need your help. You just sat there and said, yeah, y'all are, are doing it wrong. 
And I was like, yeah, I'll take you that. You had to put up with me for a long time. You I'm saying, just sat I, there. No, but, but get out of this room, though. Like, for, for a minute, in society as a whole, let's say that uh, the message for women was step it up. Would that go over well? No. And I get that. But can we get out of that No, phrase? but what? No, no, no. I want to sit there phrase. for a minute. Get out of the phrase. That's not the point. The point is the vast majority of teachers are females. We can't do this alone. It's not fair. And I homeschool, but but I'm sympathetic to teachers. It's not fair for me to look at them and be like, hello, understand my son, you know, understand boys. I don't know if they've had males in their in their lives. I don't know if they have sons. So they may not get it. So I'm saying in that picture, we need males perspective to help understand little boys and how to approach them because it's unfair to expect women Sorry. to just like know. Even yeah. me, I've researched and I have sons and my my husband, because some of you are saying, well, women should do the research. My husband still sees, no, like you're not a man. So there's going to be things you just don't get and just will not understand. Step it up is a is a trigger word for me, obviously. It is. Phrase. And I'll be smarter next time. Well, no, but I, I think it's also a double standard between men and women, don't you? It is. Yeah, it is. Like, let's just say a woman was talking, a woman was really crabby and having a big PMS time, right? Can a man just go, why don't you step it up? You know what the problem is, just get over it. We can't say that, that's outrageous. Be why? Because an understanding person wants to know, why are you acting this way? Oh, you don't feel well, this is going on with you. Oh, that makes sense. Now we can work together on this. Yes. As opposed to, forget you, Yeah. step it up. I love that Violet said that that is not a, a phrase that ought to be used. Oh my gosh, dude. You know, that seems like any familial problem these days is is resolved in culture by saying men need to step it up. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm, it's not you. I'm just totally, I'm over it. I don't have time for that anymore. Okay. It's women need to step it up. How so about that? Female step teachers, it up, ladies. Female teachers, step it up. Do yeah. your research. And don't dare go up to a man and ask him for his perspective. No, just but step no, it up. just all you women, just fix, step it up. Yeah, that's there what, we go. That's how we fix all I'll the problems. Take that. Step it up. I'm not afraid of that. Mother's Day this year, the sermon's going to be called oh "Step my God. It Up, Ladies." You just switch the topic. Step it up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm being annoying because I was gone for a few days. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My, uh, Jennifer says, I think female teachers can learn to deal with male students, but I also think males need males. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. And that is I wouldn't expect a man, a male, to fully understand my that's exactly daughters. Right. That's exactly right. But Jennifer, if we're going to need, if we, we want more male teachers, males. if we want more male teachers, we're going to have to back all the way up and start teaching men and little boys to value what you do with small children, which is play, okay, that's fine. nurture, that's good. be gentle. And it doesn't have to be tiny children. That is not it how we teach little kids anymore. It could be elementary. Well, in my house, not, it looks differently. No, and, and mine does too. I never yeah. got scared of my little boys playing with a doll. Yeah. Because guess what? A man holds his baby. That's right. And there's nothing that's not masculine about pushing a stroller. But people still freak out about this stuff. All I'm saying is if you look at the bigger picture of education, Sunday school, and the home, just like I told you earlier with a person that's disabled and we need their voice so that we can see the gaps, it would just be nice if men speak up and say, there's no way if I was a little boy I would be able to learn in that environment. Like we need voice, you're more validated because you've been a boy. So for me to say, oh, because of my son, somebody could easily be like, of course you're more sympathetic towards your son. To have a male teacher say no, like, if, I think if those voices rise up yeah. and call out for the little boys that are victims sometimes of these circumstances, it would really help. And I think women should step it up and hold each other accountable. We will step it up, <laughs> y'all. Uh, I we know gotta Jennifer gotta get, but takes that challenge. And, and, and Jennifer, I don't mean to push, I, I love your comments. I'm, no, I'm she glad actually agrees. Look, I did, just didn't want to read that to you. I understand Brian <laughs> being in his feelings about the phrase step it up. I think as females we forget men can be triggered by words in the same way. I think we need to find another way to ask them to step in and help. Yeah, good point, Jennifer. Appreciate you. We got to get out of here. I, th I need a break from you because you need to step it up. Brian! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just teasing. A break really from appreciate wait, you guys. Back. What? Thank you. Just to balance it out. And then we got to go. Eva says that's what women have been doing for years. Okay, y'all. Thank you. 
but I don't even get it. <laughs> We've been stepping Telling it up. Telling us to step it up. We've been Telling stepping us to step up. <laughs> yep, we, you have been. We'll see you guys tomorrow.